He walked through the doors with a youthful endurance. Down the hallways, he strode with assurance. He'd come to learn everything the science could provide. I want to study and understand the entire world around me. He learned about every different kind of flea. And found everyone around him living in futility and leisure. Why weren't they focused on understanding what's essential? He left as soon as he realized everyone only cared about their credential. I'm the fall of man. I'm an empty, worthless son. I'm no use at all. I never finished anything I began. I'm needed by no one. I've never found my call. He knew how, of course, that the world had to change and burn. So he found the group with the red flag appropriately stern. They spoke of overthrow and injustice and instituting a new system. He was hopeful he had found it all and joined their protests. He clashed with the police and decried their arrests. The speaker and leader said for those outside, there will be no mercy. They'll deal with the fallout damage and innocence later. And when he heard this he ran, because he feared he'd be treated as a traitor. I'm the fall of man. I'm an empty worthless son. I'm no use at all. I never finished anything I began. I'm needed by no one. I've never found my call. The simple kind of man. The farmer and worker is my dream. He said as he threw off all elements of class and regime. To work all day and end it with a simple drinking song. Is how he pictured his new life with the people would be. But this kind of idyllic life. It imagined he did not see. Instead his senses could not dull to all their superstitions. And rather than a humble folk he saw people set in their ways. Completely ready to waste every single one of their last days. I'm the fallen man. I'm an empty worthless son. I'm no use at all. I never finished anything I began. I'm needed by no one, I've done nothing but fall. He began to think out loud, I've tried everything else, maybe religion's the key. So he stepped inside of a church in hopes that he would be set free. The priest convinced him that the world was sinful, and that he, to which he readily agreed, needed to withdraw and pray, not just once or twice, but in a monastery. Frightened by society's decay. So he was in a society of monks living fruitlessly and frugally. In order to please God, Mary, and all the innumerable saints. He quickly found the monks were similarly unhappy with their complaints. I'm the fall of man. I'm an empty, worthless son. I'm no use at all. I never finished anything I began. I'm needed by no one. I've never found my call. His new desire was to leave peacefully and grow vegetables and fruit. Even if that meant he was to live and smell like a brute. Though after all he questioned and thought maybe this is not the thing. The leader of the place started to suggest excessive sharing. And he was very wary and didn't like such pairing. His mania in mind was now only focused on escape. So much that he couldn't think as to how things can turn out so wrong. At the end of the day, week and month, he was still looking for somewhere to belong. I'm the fall of man. I'm an empty, worthless son. I'm no use at all. I never finished anything I began. I'm needed by no one. I've done nothing but fall. He never thought he'd meet an attractive, beautiful woman. At least not with all the past he struggled through in this lifespan. Until he met her, or she had met him, he never thought he'd settle down. Imagine his eyes and how they lightened 
when he had a child Especially when it turned out that It was unstoppable and incredibly wild And by now the agonies of her and him It all become too much He thought of abandonment But for him She made the decision When he was all alone He could only think of the division I'm the fall of man I'm an empty, worthless son I'm no use at all I never finished anything I began I'm needed by no one I've never found my call The weary man stumbles along an empty road As he collapsed, someone else passed him Carrying an arm load It seems like you've gone through a lot of troubles, my friend the aging man who had been through so much told his story while his new friend brought him into his dormitory. He was on his last legs and knew this was all there was. He couldn't believe he'd spent his life chasing the herds. He bid his new friend lean in and these were his last words. I'm the fallen man. I'm an empty, worthless son. I'm no use at all. I never finished anything I began. I'm needed by no one. I'm an empty, worthless son. Have mercy on me. I'm an empty, worthless son. Have mercy on me. I think all is well for him. I would like to be him. I was cleaning out the closet of my memories. I found a token from another life phase. I heard you're back to your maiden name. But honestly, I don't even remember your gaze. Are you happy with every single life choice? And am I happy with every one of mine? Remember where you wrote about me, where everyone else could see, or that time I drank all of the wine and called you while you were sleeping, and you just hung up since the time had passed, where you would just send out messages, and it was too late when I received them at last. I was cleaning out the closet of my memories. I saw you living under a different name. I didn't really care about your identity. I often wondered if I'd do the same. It really wouldn't be all that hard. And I could restart for the fourth or fifth time. And maybe this time I'd get it right. And up the success ladder I'd climb. I could learn a foreign language and get my citizenship pronounced. I could teach the world a new perspective and then I wouldn't feel so trounced. I was cleaning out the closet of my memories. I wonder if I should have kept it closed. Some of it is a little too painful to look at. If I stay in here, can I keep composed? Pandora shouldn't have played with a box. I hope all the suffering is worth it. Curiosity murdered your whole evening. And all your productivity goes into the pit. If you keep digging in there, you'll find your crimes and your disappointments that you can't take back. And you can't do anything about what you dug up except to try to bury the whole stack. I was cleaning out the closet of my memories. I thought about the one who bragged of theft. And all the ones I knew that were in jail. And the ones that had exited stage left. Remember how he had joined the army. And his friends were also proud of the announcement. Since he'd thrown his other opportunities out the window. And they saw this as of his previous life. A denouncement. 
but as soon as training was over, he was dead. Use the gear like that, and you'll never get back your deposit. Last week I drove by their old house, and shudder. I didn't like those memories, so I shut the closet. She calls the men in her office pigs. She spends eight straight hours answering the phone. The customers yell their complaints at her. Her boss tells her to get a backbone. She breaks into tears in the parking lot. Surely there's got to be a better way. I can't take this job anymore. I'm going to quit one day. She's filling for the lines in the hand. But nothing is speaking to her like times past. The seeker wants some easy answers, but she's only filling a gas. Doubt is a tough herb to choke on, especially when you don't know to whom to pray. I can't take this job anymore. I'm gonna quit one day. Her child won't quit screaming. It's telling her it hates her and throwing things in her face. It's heaving every conceivable slur. She's starting to realize truthfully, it will never accept what it got on a tray. I can't take this job anymore. I'm gonna quit one day. The actor pours his heart onto the stage. The sparse crowd quietly shuffles out. The lights turn off to no applause. He begins to wonder for whom did he shout. He hangs up his wig and his costume when he's asked if he'll be in the next play. I can't take this job anymore, I'm gonna quit one day. Sammy was laying out the issues to Saul, but he didn't seem to show much concern. He was tired of being constantly interrupted, so at the same time they said, you better turn or burn. Saul left in his brand new Cadillac, while Sammy was left in the driveway. I can't take this job anymore. Day. His customers keep dying and he wasn't sure what to do. The cartel and the gangs all know his name. The detective has his phone records on a bulletin board. He's realizing this isn't the best way to gain fame. Every time he hears a siren coming closer, he thinks it'd be best to move to Norway. I can't take this job anymore. I'm gonna quit one day. I saw him standing as I was going into town. His backpack with his life was on the ground. I tried not to make any eye contact because my whole day was jam-packed. I turned away from him, but I knew he'd be around. He's left out there and he just needs a ride. The sign on the truck said courtesy patrol, but it bypasses all problems without looking. Maybe they don't have the time or the ability. To have a sign like that go by is the definition of incivility. If you want some assistance, better get a booking. And you can't manage it if you're the one who needs a ride. The father shudders and hits the gas. The wife is staring daggers ahead. The children in the back are stone silent. And the air feels quite violent. No matter how much the rope pled, he'd never get from them his needed ride. The sedan's got a meeting to get to. He's got his projects and his presentations. Money doesn't intend to arrange itself away from his seat. So it really doesn't matter who's in the heat. He doesn't have a place to give donations, so yet another pass is the one who just needs a ride. Fifteen hours straight on the road is a tough sell, moving the supply chain that's in great demand. You wouldn't even have the space to move to the side, much less the time to go astride. They've got to move all this junk from Thailand. You're not that valuable if you were the one who needs a ride. The band's full of the elderly, hits the puddles, and skip the ruts and the smuts. The exhaust sprayed over his body and his nose. It'd never be picked up in those clothes. His tattoos, his haircut made him look nuts. The helpless couldn't understand his need for a ride. When I was going back, he was still there. The feeling inside me was beginning to run. He told me he was coming from a pot farm. He meant absolutely no one any harm. I'm just going to Oregon to see my son. I try to remember the next time he just needs a ride. I'm not going that far, just the next town. 
to keep going because I correctly infer we'll have the same problem in the next. But I didn't want to be able to flex. So I let him go in what seemed like a blur. Maybe someone will stop whenever I need a ride. Her turns, you'd say she's trapped. The men in her life keep her wrapped. Her graduation ceremony ended with the lid, put in a jar by the one who was not outbid. Wouldn't you have more dreams and hopes and feeling like every moment's under a thousand telescopes? There's a wall that up, it's impossible to climb. The lights are all off because it's past bedtime. It is hard to scale when you're in armor and to hide when you shine like a charmer. She was locked in her mother's cage, never toiling enough for a living wage. She couldn't own even the iron key that would unlock the weight from around her knee, clutching under her as something burned. As the cloth and the machine turned to turn, something misplaced all her shoes and socks. While I felt like I was breaking into Fort Knox, how many women have ever visited Fairyland? I felt empty as I extended my hand. I asked in a pause, wouldn't you like to be wild? I was baffled by her response. She smiled. In a moment, for her, you might call a point of pride. She had never ventured outside. She needs a woman to crash her plane, leave the remains of her campaign. She never thought to take a hike to show her what dirt under her nails is like. She says, I've got everything I need right here. I've never seen the need to go outside my sphere. If the fan can't save me, what will I discover sitting under a tree? I don't care if you say I don't have expertise or that I never felt through my fingers the breeze. Didn't you learn about all the bugs to sting? I'm not going to waste all my comfort for a fling. I won't follow you out to the mound because right now I have no fear of being drowned and the riots and subjugations are out of frame. Nothing here puts me in a danger of flame. I'm telling her about a possible world tour, but there's nothing I can do to assure her anxieties of all the other nations saying they have all problems in their foundations. When the door shut, I felt alone. I didn't have to see her to know she was at the grindstone. I didn't know maybe she needed a guide. She still never ventured outside. He put his finger on the globe. His face asserted to probe. I felt like there was something suspicious, but I had to admire how he was ambitious. There was something about his portions that was driving to me some contortions. I walked behind him onto the ship and saw how he was equipped for the trip. Don't you know where we're headed? And that's when I heard the answer I dreaded. He carried the bags with muscles of which I was resentful and he made the biggest scares, uneventful. For me, he picked the biggest flower that I thought it should be in a bower. He gave me a drink on the first day of the week. I told him he should have the name of a peak. He just winked and at first I was confused. Around all of South America we had cruised. I hadn't even caught a show yet or found a place where I could go into debt. The champagne was missing from my room and then it all struck me with a boom. Her name wouldn't be known worldwide if she had never ventured outside. In 1990X, he loved to rock. It dated around the clock. To change, he'd be completely unwilling, despite the fact that to him it was killing. Everything he loved in his planet faded. Honestly, he had been totally degraded. A promising young man utterly embarrassed, who said the universe was the fairest. It definitely could have been me, taking out the dragged out path, not paying the fee. I didn't know him at this stage, but I heard it was quite the age. To know then was to know a man who was trapped in snow. A one who was lost in his own. Someone who had been completely blown. Couldn't take care of his kids. Had no wife. If he had a buck, he'd take it with a knife. He never was sure who he was. He'd say the reason was just because. He'd treat everything like a game of charades. Then he'd end up wrapped in band-aids. He'd say he'd found Jesus. But the devil's who really frees us. Imagine now the same man, even though I'm not his biggest fan. Standing in front of him preaching at church. His past had even helped him lurch. Forward and rise even higher. I must have not, I even took a flyer. He tricked me into believing nonsense, but for his part he took no offense. He gave his story in graphic detail, like the time he had to raise bell. He spoke with a special authority. He wallowed in his superiority. God's gonna throw you in a fire. He'd set himself up as a town crier. Are you not afraid of annihilation? Because I can give you the correct citation. He'd got everything together and had more kids. Never did nothing that Christ forbids. A pillar unbelievably strong, here he is diving headlong, into society's decay and shame, holding everybody to the flame. Are you prepared for a tribulation? Because that train isn't leaving the station. The decay is strong in this one. Everyone will be judged for what they've done. I don't remember most of what he told me. I just remember how he made me agree that life requires you to be an extremist. I knew he'd leave and he'd be missed. That day I didn't understand and cried. I had to ask the next day out of pride. The women in his life took it all because everything will go into a firewall. Only they could see the world in this manner. Follow him down and fly the banner. When he quit, it was an uprightness. I was surprised by his impoliteness. Everything has gone quite stale, he'd say as they tried with him blackmail. I had to get out of there. My sanity was living on a prayer. Sometime later, I got a call. 
Hit down a reverse St. Paul. How'd you slide to what you were? Which part of life do you prefer? The rock had taken back hold. He had found it like a new gold. He locked himself in the bathroom. He was back to doom and gloom. This time he threatened to end it all. Better change the locks in the hall. He wandered the street all alone, completely removed from his backbone. Put him on his knees, but don't believe anything he says and make him leave. The rock has made him his slave. They retaught him how to behave. What happened to the man from before? Maybe this is who he is at the core. Slumming around looking for a bed. Courts want to know what you fled. Employing a killer in construction. Is this really your best seduction? I've got to fix everything, he says. Throw off the rock. Elect a new prez. New job, new wife. Is this a new man? How could it be in such a short span? Heard about a new religion. And has got to find a new pigeon. If I'm right, he had had to cast. The user because the difference was vast. He found a place that didn't know. How he'd used to move a lot of cargo. Somewhere in the country surrounded by trees, where he could stand out and feel the breeze. I always hated that these places bred, the worst kinds of people at the head. Who'd really want to hear a speech from a man who's lived like a leech, sucking off everyone around him, like some sort of villain from Grimm? But the world's too real to have birds, to peck out of the eyes of those who speak false words. I walked into the chapel, though I wasn't ready to grapple with a faith I no longer believed in. But to be fair, when I saw the bearded chin, Despite his love of playing the scaremonger, he really wasn't a part of this any longer. You might say I don't believe in redemption, that I should have some sort of exemption, but my suspicion is that his whole intention is to control people by intervention. Maybe his lack of constancy is the key. It won't allow him to let people be carefree. I really don't care what he's saying today. I just feel bad for those who are his prey. There must be something inside Bruin that could explain the directions of Wooin. If you really think I've been unkind, maybe it's just the epitome of mankind. Hamlet's brothers represent a division. One side rightfully is facing constant derision. Hamlet has to make a bold decision. His brothers stalk in the edge of the play. The foundations of the country begin to sway. Ford and Bras dressed up all in gray. The king in the rafters asks, what did he say? The man in black is telling him the play to mark. But they're trying to protect the ideas of the oligarch. Julius sees his brothers stabbing him in the back. Everyone in the audience turns around at the crack. The sun is spiraling from the attack. Caesar runs through the rows of the house. He's trying to save the child and the spouse. His brother's trapped in a fire that won't douse. The officer they could not figure out how to rouse. Caesar didn't like him all that much. So he took his ashes and spread them in a hutch. Richard III's brother is angling for the crown. He's tired of playing the role of the clown. I need better roles to get anywhere in this town. He runs through Richard's money on the stage. He gotta go through it to make a living wage. When Richard found out, he went into a rage. They put him in the tower if it weren't the Bronze Age. Who would have thought the best could be poor? Put on the posters, because now Richard has to go on tour. Shylock's brother's sharpening the knife. He wants to take the flesh as well as the life. He doesn't know he'll be tricked by the wife. He's so busy searching for what's fair that he's unaware the payment's just a snare. The laughter of the crowd won't cover the affair. Comedy is in the marriage of the air. The scale can't measure the brother's discrimination or the subject of his constant fixation. Romeo's brother's looking for heads. The plot's hanging on only by threads. The friar had one too many sweetbreads. He's intercepted by the brother Romeo, who takes the message so no one will know. Jumping down the railing to what's below, where his horse is waiting after placing show. When tragedy appears on the playbill, his brother knows just what to fulfill. My North American friends are crowding the bar. The lady behind it is finding it bizarre. She's getting confused by all the orders from people that have crossed many borders. 
Wen turns to me and said, you know it, boy. I said yes because I didn't want to annoy. They all started chanting and yelling that the North Pole was their place of dwelling. In a moment of stupor, the next to me, I was surprised to be their next draftee. They asked me where I was from and going. I made my way through the table by elbowing. My North American friends are constantly traveling. Oh man, there are things in Shanghai unraveling. In Istanbul, they'll cut you down. In Mumbai, you better not go downtown. Casablanca wouldn't let us be together. And when we were in Sydney, we didn't know whether Johannesburg would like us any better. And we couldn't go to Almaty because we didn't have a letter. Asked them if they came here for fun. No, we're only invited to where it's undone. We just want hot meals and a shower that works. Anything else in life we consider perks. My North American friends watched her walk by. And one of them gave out a very audible sigh. If you wear it on your left hand, she'd be curious. But I'm not trying to give you advice that'll make you injurious. Look at this one, the oldest remarks. Between us, there could be some sparks. Hey, I went through that age, and it's tough. I realize he was just speaking off the cuff. He was slightly embarrassed by the others. He'd remove himself from the situation if he had his druthers. He smiled, though, and he sure liked to laugh. I'm sure there was something under it about a former better half. My North American friends, I spoke their terminology. I could see through them without apology. They know how to have a good time rowdy. To not get up to pay until the drinks get cloudy. For anyone else, it really doesn't matter, we're backwoods. It's really no shame we can't travel to each other's neighborhoods. I couldn't quite get over the fact that my whole life away I had packed in order to rid myself of the stench. And then when I smell it, I'm immediately back on the bench. Maybe I'm always my background, no matter the cleanse. And I discovered that one night with my North American friends. As he burst in and removed all his armor, he said, tonight call me the heart of a lion. She nods her head and smiles at him while he claims they're gonna retake Zion. His bag of gold is placed on the table. She curls up next to him as she's regaled by stories that demonstrated his warlike piety. Even though the whole venture had failed, it's not too big of a deal, he says. That speculation bubble is bound to grow and Jerusalem is gonna be quite the resort when they start shipping in my bottles of Bordeaux. He puts a bag of tea on the dresser, and she asks him, what is that? He said, let me put the kettle on, and you'll understand why we have to chat. I'm from the high eastern mountains, and I'm sure like to see you up there. She's busy trying to put her dress on, while he's sitting in the armchair. Is this all you came for, and do you like it hot? She nodded in agreement and brought it close. He talked about how all the monks grew it, and she felt in her hand a lethal dose. When he put the plastic pieces by the bed, she flipped them in her hand and started to count. No, don't do it like that, he said, snatching. And between his fingers, it was all paramount. When you have a face and are showing a heart, it's always nice to be able to convert it to cash. The owners on the floor will greet you with a clap. Those are the times it's necessary to be able to dash. She nodded her head and pretended to write. All the while, he was explaining all the rules. She needed a mix and found the corkscrew. Because of the worst part of this job is dealing with such fools. He had a mark of a raindrop under his brow. She pulled out some clips and made them appear. She might have been impressed until he put on a CD. She did everything she could to avoid giving a sneer. He beat his head softly, but she did not move. There's a hundred thousand that are much worse, but several thousand a whole lot better. So she started looking inside her purse. When he asked what she was thinking of, she lied and said she was concentrating. And he started all over again to get the meaning, but she just found the whole experience so grating. The philosopher walks in with a stomach ache. He asks for soup, but she just shrugs. No one's asked for that before here, but his diseased brain is covered in slugs. He's telling her about how wise he happens to be and about a science that is more than happy. He's going to discover in the book that he's writing. 
She's begging him just to make it snappy. School is back in session for Philology. He puts on a record from the Philharmonic and starts to complain about it so loudly. She realizes his problem is completely chronic. The geek is saying he's scoured the whole underworld. He tells her he's looking for his fiance. Well, he puts Alexander's head about the bed. He's afraid it one day turn to clay. He rolls the stone back and forth, and the marbles in his mind begin to rotate. Her concern about currency is raised, since she doesn't want to be a really cheap date. She doesn't look at him quite yet, but starts to stare in the midst of the fire, where the raging pigeons scream at the prisoner, and does so with all the coupons shown to expire. Count Orlock is showing off his name, and his shadow is dancing on the hotel's wall. You should come to my castle, honey, he says in a way that represents a cat call. When I was doing a little better, they came to me, but now I've lost a lot of my ability to lure. Do you think it has something to do with my teeth? He asked if she could stake down a cure. I don't really like the sunshine, but that's no big deal now. I left all my inheritance on my boat, and it's captained by a plague of rats that are trying to raise the money they need to vote. The mad geographer spins his globe badly. It's coming off its standing rails. He's giving her a quiz or there'll be nothing. He asks her if she can follow all the trails. The islands are hidden under all the lines. The oceans have poured out onto the table. The hypnotism of the show flies above the light bulb. It's blank now and without any label. Wake up soon and hitch it all together. Because when the mob comes knocking at the door, you'll be stuck having to redraw all the lines. And won't that certainly be some chore? When she opened the door the next time, she was surprised to see his manner of dress. But he didn't stop it until he made it to the drawer. One of his friends had already made a mess. And he started going in and searching. While she was on the side of the room just looking. He started pointing out everything to her. So she would understand the whole booking. She told him she understood it quite well and agreed. Then he asked her why she still does this. And then it was completely counter to what she had said. But he stopped. Because he was getting ready for bliss. After the man had pounded on the door, he said I walked on the side of the road to get here. It was apparent he had walked a hundred miles. His body was filthy and the sweat was clear. His hand showed the work of a man committed, who had broke his body to reach such a state. He had put in extra hours just to be here. He's not one who would ever argue over the rate. Can you call him a favorite in this part of the world? Or is there anyone that we can call spoiled? She takes the chart down and hides it from the boss. All this because he does not see her as soiled. I strut like I have some kind of confidence, but the only ability I have is to waltz, which certainly doesn't have the practical application, especially when everything I say happens to be false. This is my first time for everything, I claim, but she has a whole closet full of receipts. For when the federal agent comes to count it all, and takes the place of the janitor to wash her sheets. I tell all my hopes to her, but not my dreams. I keep them to myself like they're confidential, not because I don't remember them well, but I don't want to admit how they're influential. He wore a jacket in the 100 degrees. It knocked over that house with quite a breeze. The patrol car pulled up to put him in squeeze. Here he is trying to pedal away on his bike. I was in line and he was arguing with the clerk. The graveyard shift was giving me quite the smirk. In that place, no longer did we want to lurk. He wasn't quite ready to check out of there. He showed everyone something he'd wrote on some papers. On it was a list of every single one of his capers. One might wonder if it'd give them vapors. But he hung it on his fridge for all to see. When the cops let him go, he went straight. The nearest place he could to get a ball of eight. The officers were using him as bait. They told him to get on the floor with a smile. He called himself the real Mr. Money. He never found himself out when it's sunny. Over every fence law, he'd hop like a bunny. He refused to be tamed or domesticated. When he'd fly by on the highway, people noticed the way the fluid would spray. Hit to the mechanic, get down, play. But he was driving without any hood protection. He raided my dog's medicine locker, looking for a hardware blocker. He really wasn't much of a talker. 
but said it was the only thing that made him better. I noticed him sleeping in his car outside the store. When he went inside, he claimed he was swollen and sore. Barefoot, he claimed he'd been working the floor. I knew he'd been staying out there all night. He was on the street, wheeling a cart. He said, help a vet and have a heart. I told him there was no war, he was apart. He smiled though and said, hey, it's working, right? He called himself the real Mr. Money. He never found himself out when it was sunny. Over every fence law, it hopped like a bunny. He refused to be tamed or domesticated. They were testing the boundaries of fun. Headlights skirting, wheels swirling. And when it collapsed, they smacked the tree. Through the windshield and air she was hurling. Her spinal cord snapped into pieces. And she'd never run up the stairs anymore. But at least she doesn't have to pick out a shoe. It's chewing up people and keeping score. The winding road won't forgive you. It's counting up the people that are slew. You'd be lucky to survive the turn to roller coaster road. They were piled in on the way to the job. Undocumented, uninvited, and mistreated they rode. A bump sent them off and against the pavement. The American dream dumped out the load. The congressman shrugs his shoulders indifferently. It wasn't for them to pay for. It's not like they're going to try to sue. It's chewing up the people and keeping score. The winding road won't forgive you. It's counting out the people that are slew. You'd be lucky to survive the turn to roller coaster road. We made it together for seven whole years. But the aid turned out to be a little too tough. I can't blame her for speeding off. In my car and with all my stuff. The tires are no longer touching the ground. The lights went off and the engine stopped its roar. When I saw her again, I sure didn't like her view. Just chewing up the people and keeping score. The winding road won't forgive you. It's counting up the people that are slew. You'd be lucky to survive the turn to roller coaster road. The last Neanderthal was banking on his lottery ticket. He'd been tricked by the salesman into a financing plan. The lug nuts were spinning off by the time it signed. And he had to show off his ticket to the caveman. By the time the numbers were rattled off, they wouldn't even have a car to restore. Much less ancestors to put into a zoo. It's chewing up people and keeping score. The winding road won't forgive you. It's counting up the people that the slew. You'd be lucky to survive the turn to roller coaster road. The driver suggests all the passengers get out. I'm gonna try something crazy, so watch closely. Everyone files out to the safe half the hill and watch the driver misjudge grossly. He's sliding down the mountain without abandoning. How they're gonna get home to Ecuador? They sure don't have any clue. It's chewing up people and keep it score. The winding road won't forgive you. It's counting up the people that are slew. You'd be lucky to survive the turn the roller coaster road. I took the turn one day out of sheer curiosity. I needed an alibi alias and a new address. Could the bumps in the road be my savior? And the steep cliffs and soul lane bless? I embraced the newfound loss of control. At least I was no longer filming the bore. Who knows what will be in my next best cue? Cause it's chewing up people and keep it score. Winding road won't forgive you. It's counting up the people that are slew. You'd be lucky to survive the turn the roller coaster road. I said, hey, Dio, why are you holding on to that lantern, man? He brought it up to me and asked, are you an honest man? I replied, Dio, are you a struggling man? You live in a pipe, that's no place for a man. Oh, that's a jar, he replied, a good hope for all, man. But that might be confusing, so let's pick up where this began. Just know that no matter what, he just always does what he can. Little Dio is not above a little fraud, let's not kid. He told me I'm gonna buy a goat, a kid. So he took some metal and melted it down, who's this gonna kid? 
When it was time to get caught, he said, Oh, all around, I was just kid. To which him and the cop said, Get out of here, kid. He was not above a little humility. So that's what he did. Do you explain to me I'm part of the earth? To keep the economy going, a man's got to dig in the earth. But now I was convinced he was the strangest guy on earth. I looked at him like an honest wind, fire, and earth. Is it true the struggling ones inherit the earth? He surprised me when he said no. It actually all depends on birth. I think he got the sense him I was starting to dog. Especially when other people threw stones and called him a dog. And of course when they put him to work, it just dog. You'd never hear his hammer. Just the barking of a dog. He told me of his bosses if you don't watch them closely, they'll turn dog. It got me thinking, why is life such a slog? When I kept asking why he lived like this, he gave me the finger. So I reported the police, you gave the wrong criminal the finger. When Dio was questioning his beard, he started to finger. The cop said, how much poison? He said, pour me a finger. The cop swallowed it himself, being all thumb and finger. Dio and I realized that this is not the right place to linger. The next day I saw Dio spraying on a rock. Can't do that, they'll chain you to a rock. Or he said, you can cap up in a boat that does not rock. He's gonna color the world with the phrase, I rock. I asked him what made him do this. He said, well, rock. I told him the guillotine's coming back, the chopping block. The well-wishing wizard was asking, what's it mean to be me? I asked Dio, who said, please don't tempt me. I said, I'll do anything, don't try to take mine in me. The wizard sneered, poor Dio, you're nothing to me. Dio just held up his pet chicken and said, this is you, and this is me. And well, the wizard, you should have seen his eyes glow with glee. I've got to be me, get out of my way, said the very special general, used to get in his way. Dio just sat there, as was always his way. The general asked him, how do I live life the right way? Dio smiled and said, when you take a car trip, don't take the wrong way. The very special general held his head in his hands, leaving in dismay. I bowed to the statue and it still won't give me what I want. I'm begging you, please, Dio, don't leave me in want. And do not give me that nonsense that it is a need or a want. Dio laughed at all my problems as if he was want. He pointed to the bag and asked, is there anything I can make you want? I asked him, what are you going to do? Bring me to the font? Dio suddenly exclaimed, oh, this wine is getting old. I checked the bottle. And it was only 33 years old. He whispered, I stole it from a classmate of old. Let's see if he notices in his house that is old. Or if he is looking for the sock, the good old. Because he loves nothing more than to find someone to scold. Why he burned the scripts? I could not get. He told me if you don't keep me warm, this is what you get. He warned me if you look too close in your eyes, it'll get. I stared at the fire and wondered what out of it I would get. The sundial was off, so it was too late to get. The soldiers started mocking me for forgetting to aid in a bet. When Dio was hard up on cash, he did not fall. It did not bother him to see the government fall. He always told me things will be normal again next fall. I wasn't so sure we would survive until nightfall, or if we'd ever get to see another natural waterfall. I thought for sure soon would be thrown up against a wall. Finally, I was able to ditch Dio and go. I tricked him, fastened him in the ancient game of Go. I saw the opposite man and thought to have a nice go. He was huffing and puffing with his heavy pack that won't go. When you forget yourself, you start to collect. It's the way things go. You know, people like that are always looking for new plays to stow. When I finally saw Dio again, he was on strike. His bowl had been broken when he'd been dealt to strike. It forever flying fits of rage when the thought would strike. He was down to nothing, and it was apparent when the clock strike. When I finally offered him something, 
He said, off my list, you I will strike. The last I heard he was lost, when he'd head off on a hike. You were a happy man wearing a rainbow. And I thought, hey, maybe cloth ain't so bad. You party down the street and I watch the show. All the banks fly now, so it's not so sad. They'll hang your neck to the flag. On a credit card, you can buy a new sofism. All the silkworms are slaving for you to brag. They're telling us, let's celebrate every schism. You're the red one with the youth and the sickle. You told me everything in the paper was propaganda. I asked you about their minds for nickel. But you denied the prisoners brought in about the memoranda. The hell, hang your neck to the flag. Oh, fads keep coming back like Bolshevism. All the silkworms are slaving for you to brag. They're telling us, let's celebrate every schism. You raised to show you're national. And tell me you're proud of the land of the mother. I nod my head, but if I'm being completely rational, I think you're using the material to cover some mother. The hell, hang your neck to the flag. And have you chance to prevent you from seeing another prism. All the silkworms are slaving for you to brag. They're telling us, let's celebrate every schism. You tell me you're proud of your region of state and labor your house with the rope and the pole. So the ones an hour away you hate to represent where you're born, I don't see the goal. Don't hang your neck with the flag. Even your local governments are above criticism. All the silkworms are slaving for you to brag. They're telling us, let's celebrate every schism. You drape on your house, you hate the leader. You're not the one who picked him out. I don't feel the need to be a pleader. I don't like it. I don't like him either. But don't need the clout. Don't hang your neck with the flag. He flails his arm against what he calls despotism. All the silkworms are slaving for you to brag. They're telling us, let's celebrate every schism. High above your house, wind blows the cross. As if its victims would have been celebrating. I'm not sure what it means other than the loss of the rights of other people by dictating. They'll hang your neck with the flag, which is only bringing more people to atheism. All the silkworms are slaving for you to brag. They're telling us, let's celebrate every schism. The next year you staple up support. Hell the king and all his princes and his queen. You'd die for the ones who'd storm the fort. And you'd let onlookers know, like you're a projection screen. They'll hang your neck with the flag. You don't look through the lens of heroism. All the silkworms are slaving for you to brag. They're telling us, let's celebrate every schism. You're celebrating a country you've never been. Putting stickers everywhere because they're on the news. The latest tragedy happened to them when the old emblems are away and no longer amused. They'll hang your neck with a flag and sell you souvenirs for false activism. All the silkworms are slaving for you to brag. They're telling us, let's celebrate every schism. When you stumble into the cave, you're gonna see her in there at the oven. If your villain is the brave, you'll ask her about the queen in the coven. She'll put you in the next raid, drink in the stew and let the love in. If you're ready to move on up in the world, when you hope everything's gone without a glitch, you start to feel like you've got the itch. Call her up because she's a witch. The doctor's sad, she's got a wicked tongue. She's letting you see your descendants. She tells you, from the trees you'll be strong. That'll be fine if they get my lieutenants. All the false ones will fall from. You'll never have to claim them as dependents. If you're ready to move on up in the world, when you hope everything's gone without a glitch, you can start to feel you got the itch. Call her up because she's a witch. She has you asking your friends questions about where and how they were born. And you don't feel like taking any suggestions while your enemies are going through the corn. And she's avoiding all your household congestions. She won't cuff you when you blow your horn. If you're ready to move on up in the world, when you hope everything's gone without a glitch, you can start to feel like you got the itch. Call her up because she's a witch.
I woke up pressed like something was inside. Is this who I always was or am I swelling? I ran to the mirror but my legs were weak. Something was put inside of me which was compelling. The law says I'm not allowed, it's expulsion. Even though it's causing me repulsion, the lady tells me it's a blessing, but I'm just falling into another convulsion. I don't want you to be too distressed, but the doctor says you're a hopeless case. What's wrong with you? You can only be guessed. There's a needle pressing up behind my eye. It's like something's in there with a hammer. I hope they can find all the nails. When I talk, it's nothing but stammer. Because my brain has been checked out to a child who does nothing but shout, and it's making me go completely ballistic. I think shaving the inside of my skull is the best route. I don't want you to be too distressed, but the doctor says you're a hopeless case. What's wrong with you can only be guessed. I promise it is only a very minor wound. My bones sticking out should cause you no alarm. I'm not feeling anything yet, but all the old women are saying I'm in harm. I'm more flexible like this anyway. If you put me back out there, I can still play. The tingling up my spine provides new energy. My only fear is to be cast out on my birthday. I don't want you to be too distressed. But the doctor says you're a hopeless case. What's wrong with you can only be yes. My skin is all flaking after running through the fire. When I touch it, it's peeling off and sliding off. Will I ever be able to regrow my hair? As I'm placing the barrel like a Romanoff? I start to get the idea I'll never look the same. I'm getting scared of what will be my nickname. Or how schoolboys will toss rocks in my direction. I guess this is what happens when you cock the flame. I don't want you to be too distressed. But the doctor says you're a hopeless case. What's wrong with you can only be guessed. It's hard to do your job with a clogged windpipe. Dr. Henry, can I have a second? I know you're completely booked. My dying brain imagines being beckoned. The bright light is dancing in the pipe. The big Y has quite the gripe. Considering I spent all my time upsetting, those who were trying to promote his height. I don't want you to be too distressed. But the doctor says you're a hopeless case. What's wrong with you can only be guessed. Everyone's telling me there's nothing. I'm looking at every inch of the microscope. Looking for a condition to diagnose. Going hungry because I spent all my money on soap. The nurse ushers me away from their desk. I'm begging them to call me grotesque. But they say get the hell out of here. Because they're getting ready to perform burlesque. I don't want you to be too distressed. But the doctor says you're a hopeless case. The wrong view can only be guessed. pinch came and you admitted it wasn't your style. What if something goes wrong and I don't mess with guns? I've got the boss man right here. Do you have him on the dial? What we'll get, we'll move it by the tons. Paranoid, paranoid. You think now, oh man, how did I get tricked into a heist? You put your dark clothes on because it is cool to wear black. How did I get here when I was taught to love Jesus Christ? Before you even understand it, the whole thing started with a crack. Paranoid, paranoid. Smoke poured in and you hear and see zip. You only know that the good shit better be coming. Before you can even feel it, you've tightened your grip. To those around you, it's nothing but humming. Paranoid, paranoid. How did I get here? What decision put me here? You think to yourself as the front man pulls the trigger. If I disappear, who will be there to shed a tear? Maybe if I'd put into my schooling and studying a little more rigor. Paranoid, paranoid. You grab a bag of what you are not even sure. And whether it's worth the bleeding and running, you better have for all your ills a cure. Some for which you did not have the cunning. Paranoid, paranoid. Okay, what's the damage, one says. Better go to the hospital. You look down and you just make sure you're still all there. Oh, it's just a little cancer and a few broken bones, said the boss noncommittal. He and his main wingman had been caught in the snare. Paranoid, paranoid. Hmm, yes, he says, we have to eliminate the extra weight. And get rid of everyone we don't need. It didn't earn. Alarm bells start going off in your mind and refuse to obey. A different paths of destruction, the wheels start to churn. Paranoid, paranoid. When you think you've got away, one of the instrument approaches. It says, bad news, my friend. The police seize your accounts. They've got videotape with you among the cockroaches. And when they add it all up, they've got the right amounts. Paranoid, paranoid. You go to this celebration anyway because you need a drink. The waitress comes up to you and says, the first timer never makes it. Whether she knows it or not, she's brought you to the brink. Now you can't stop thinking about how they'll throw you in the pit. Paranoid, paranoid. 
You ditch all your dark clothes and like a bride, wear white. If that won't make you pure, I'm not sure what will. The preacher told you he'd cover your blight when contemplating the apocalypse. What's the usual drill? Paranoid, paranoid. Now you're completely sure they're coming for you. Ready to eliminate you so you won't suck. You're just one on a list. Are you the next on a queue? Now are you so obsessed with the clock? Paranoid, paranoid. How can you not see them around every corner? Avoid everyone. Maybe they even copped your mother. The preacher says this is the end and you think the warner. Is this all there is? Or is there an out there other? Paranoid, paranoid. Two gunmen approach and before you know it they've turned into pigeons. The assassin's blade transforms quickly into a bar of soap. The hitman on the dark bridge is actually just selling his religions. The man in the riot shield and bully club is just the Pope. Paranoid, paranoid. The detective comes to the door and asks if he can make some proclamations. Sure, I guess, you would say. I've been told I'm a pretty good interview. He tells you he knows where you got all the cash for your donations. That you made, and why there's money poking out of the top of your shoe. Paranoid, paranoid. Oh, I'm actually a world-class counterfeiter, you reply. This money isn't even real. I like to play the Monopoly. The detective sees through your obvious lie. But he spends a few hours there because he does his job very sloppily. Paranoid, paranoid. He asks where you were on the night all this occurred. You make up that you were trying out all the clubs. And I spent so much money my vision's all blurred. The detective's getting impatient. His temples he rubs. Paranoid, paranoid. Look, he tells you, I'd arrest you right now. But I took too many painkillers and forgot my handcuffs at home. Just stay here, and I'll be back if you allow. When he leaves, you think of all the places you can roam. Paranoid, paranoid. You look in your wallet trying to find the ticket. They'll help you escape so you can be completely remade. To a small town with small habits you can pick up and kick it. Maybe even some port or factory where you can apply a trade. Paranoid, paranoid. New town, new name, but still looking behind you. Will they be able to find you? Are you now safe? The old man stares down and asks, Is this who? In your clothes and sweat, you begin to chafe. Paranoid, paranoid. Better keep moving on, now you're a vagabond. No place to be and certainly no people to see. You even do the unthinkable, unforgivable, and dye your hair blonde. When you need a few dollars, you know how to go on a spree. Paranoid, paranoid. The only safe place you can think of is in the woods of a national park. So you pitch your tent among the bears, elk, bison, and moose. Surviving on rainwater, herbs, berries, mushrooms, and tree bark. You lie around in ivy, warily avoiding the spruce. Paranoid, paranoid. What's that turtle doing? You begin to question. It's moving so slowly. And why does it need so much armor? You become alarmed at its very existence. You run away as far as you can from the charmer. Paranoid, paranoid. On the globe, if you go too far, you're back where you started. If you keep going as far as you can all the way ahead, you have a quick thought for those of yours dearly departed. But now you have the realization that they can't kill you if you're already dead. Well, honestly, Gil, he was kind of a bad guy. He was an absolute charge and could fly real high. The normal people under him just groaned because he was just taking everything they owned. So they took to all their unpaved roads. They were scattered with all old Gil's loads and screamed and yelled and beat their breasts. Gil looked out and knew he had to make some arrests. He looked at his assistant and said, where's my sword? The assistant was too busy looking at a house he could not afford. The gods were starting to get all upset. They knew soon they'd have to make a threat. Their party was getting interrupted by the noise. They were still recovering from a night out with the boys. One of them stood up with an ice bag on his forehead. After he stumbled for a moment, he finally said, over the laughter and his own stuttering and slurring, 
I've got an idea to soul stirring. Oh, I think we'll like this one, said his friend. Quiet, you, did the god with the idea amend. What we need to do is send someone in, Gil. Do you know of anyone who fits the bill? A still struggling queen in the back started to stand and started saying a bunch of words that would get her banned. I could do it, she wanted to claim, because really she had absolutely no shame. So she changed tact and said, I know a man. I bet you know a lot of men, one said deadpan. She pretended not to notice, but the gods laughed. So loud that the still groggy god felt daft. That he'd spend his immortality with scraps. When he'd rather spend his time under the wraps. Don't you know, E? The queen began to proceed. She'd pitch something which they all agreed. One whiny god protested. He's a bit of a wild card. And I wouldn't want E running around in my backyard. And isn't Gil a demigod anyway? I don't think for E it'd be easy prey. Oh my, I didn't think I was surrounded by whiners, cried the queen, forgetting she was one of the worst hardliners. I'll agree with anything to end my headache, said the first speaker, barely awake. The stamp of approval was given, and he was out, and there was something pouring out of his snout. He was the toughest beast in the middle of Asia. He had run all throughout the mountains of Caucasia. To set him loose was a scary proposition, because no one would ever stifle his ambition. When the people under Gill saw E coming, they'd really wish someone had invented plumbing, or at least had dug a pit in which they could hide, a deep one, where to find them, you'd need a guy. Gill's assistant came in to give him the news, but Gill was already putting on his shoes. I'll fight the bastard and send him to hell, even though he actually knew his father quite well. Gill forgot his sword, but was already out the door. That was fine, because Gil had been exercising his core. People gathered around to see the big showdown. Visitors came from all sides of town. Even that region it usually smells like a landfill, because that time, that truck had that spill. He looked Gil in the eyes, and with a sigh, told him, Gil, you're kind of a bad guy. So Gil threw his fist at the beast's teeth, and he just ducked to where he was beneath. The snarling wasn't just for effect, and Gil found himself on the ground decked. The crowd started cheering and banging drums, because they were sure they understood all outcomes. Of course, Gil got back up and made his move, and at this moment, started getting into his groove. He found himself trapped in a headlock. The crowd knew it was a fatal choice to mock, and began to scatter into all their different directions. The priest from the casino started demanding collections. A heckler stood at the side and shouted obscenities and started to reveal all the criminal's identities. He let out an agitated squeal of pain while Gil started to get out his chain. You know I could kill you right now and do anything that the fates don't allow. But I was looking for a pet, you see. Something that isn't all gross and feathery. So I'm gonna take you home to be my pal. I'll build you a nice large corral. He thought about it like he had a choice. But there was something convincing in his voice. Sure, Gil would forget to feed him sometimes. I guess you could add it to his list of his crimes. But all in all, he was getting used to domestication. Especially after he was subject to castration. Gil's assistant used to take him out on walks. But one time, Hungry E called him up on the docks. And Gil had to train E to be a secretary. And find a suit that went on a body so hairy. The gods all shook their heads in dismay. Their only idea had turned into child's play. Oh, Gil, why can't we get you to comply? The queen said, oh, Gil, he's kind of a bad guy. I'm never drinking again, said the god who was quite ill. At my age, it's no longer worth the thrill. But look, we have to do something about E. Something that even will make Gil flee. If any of you have any ideas, I'd love to hear him. The god of lunacy knew he had a gem and began to gather up all his papers and pens. He started, you know sorrow is the state of men's, but he was cut off and struck down where he stood. His crime being that he'd wasted so much wood, which back then was a crime that was instant death because the god of laws had taken too much meth. 
We've wasted so much time, said the queen. Yes, said another. My room isn't clean. I think I've really fixed it this time. Something that will really shift the whole paradigm. The rest all sat in silence and were intrigued. Except the drinking again god, who was fatigued. I know a man from heaven, who's a bull. Gil will think he's quite a handful. Her audience just groaned and muttered. The drinking god between his swig shuddered. Okay, queen, try it. But this is goodbye. We'll let you do this, since Gil is kind of a bad guy. The guy who was a bull had a nice apartment. It was in a good neighborhood and by the fire department. He wouldn't step outside for less than a grand. And yet he still managed to keep his back tan. I really dislike people, he once claimed. And for this, he could not be blamed. Socially, he was a little immature. When he'd gotten his apartment, he forgot to read the brochure. So when the little messenger rang the bell, the bull man ripped him apart like a gazelle. But there was good money in this gill and e job. And the bull felt he could use a kebab. After three wrong turns, Gil was found. Instead of a greeting, he was told he was hellbound. Now come on, that's no correct conduct. Are you just here to obstruct? The bull had forgotten his dictionary, so he was no longer able to provide any commentary. The two fought and hacked at each other. In another life, Gil could have been his brother. Not that reincarnation was present in his mind, because Gil plucked out his eyes, and now he was blind. The man with the nice apartment's battle cry Oh, Gil, you're at least, kind of, a bad guy. He stood in the back, sharpening a knife. Maybe things had been different if he'd gotten a wife. He started hacking, cutting, and dividing. Gil made sure the whole thing was law-abiding. The casino priest nodded in concordance. He sorted out the pieces by importance. Gil regretted not setting up a postal service. He started getting a little nervous. As secretary and pet, he had a duty. There was nothing about which he could be snooty. So Edie the Queen had to travel on a bunch of roads that had no gravel. When he got there, they just stared. The Queen was confused as to why he dared. Maybe he now had a little bit of regret and wondered why he had taken on so much debt. He probably could have lived without the fancy shirts or he could have saved money in spurts. The Queen finally decided to ask, what's in the bag? that was covered in diamonds and wrapped in a flag. Oh, only your hopes, desires, and dreams. And both of them noticed it was tearing at the seams. I guess now is the time for me to look inside. For E, this is quite a moment of pride. The queen gave such a look of disgust at the whole experience. She just cussed. She didn't know she was so easy to mortify. She said, Gil, you're kind of a bad guy. Neither E nor the Queen understood psychology, and they certainly wouldn't have passed a course in biology. So the Queen hypnotized E and drove him mad. She'd send him this way back to his comrade. All the while, a god yelled, Shut up, I'm sleeping. I'll never drink again, I promise, he added, weeping. E was a changed beast with a new disposition. Now his whole life was filled with contrition. Gil couldn't read his poems of death and woe. Like a moody teenager who'd lost their bow. Oh, just end it all, he insensitively teased, not knowing that his friend was now quite diseased. It can be hard to get it when you felt that way, when everything inside you fills a ray. Gil was at the top, he at the bottom. He honestly wouldn't make it through the autumn. As the trees stripped down to nothing and were bare, and by all appearances didn't have a prayer, after all, the gods were too busy playing games to worry about anything that might soon go up in flames. When he can't crawl out of bed because of legs of lead, then you've experienced something beyond dread. Gil stood over him and his countenance fell. By now E had begun to smell. Invent the revolver, he said with a smile. I'll play a roulette game in style. I'm dabbling in self-destruction while you're busy with reconstruction, which was true since Gil was busy with his tower. He wanted to show off his manpower. While the morning casino priests paid their calls, Gil stopped all of them in the halls and told them that they were much too early. He's not dead yet, though his hair is curly. He tried to stand and with him communicate, but Gil couldn't stop looking at his gate. Oh, Gil, I'm not sure how to classify. 
you, except to say, you're kind of a bad guy. At this point, E began to bare his chest, and if you've been paying attention, you'd have guessed that E was at the end and ducked out of life, and that he found himself without all the strife. Gil stood there in confusion and disbelief, something that doesn't often happen to a chief. The first thing I've got to do is resign my post and give away everything. Well, okay, almost. I've got to go out on a journey to find myself. It doesn't matter if I find the ice shelf. Gil thought the earth was stretched like a sheet. He believed you could run around it if you were an athlete. So he set off on his impossible and improbable quest. The people relieved of his rule thought it was just a jest. They stayed in their huts and continued to sew. Because they believed that Gil could never meet his death blow. But Gil was milking up some high mountain. Like a loser looking for the youth fountain. What can you discover there but a collection of frozen remains? Of people who, to be very frank, lost their brains. Up and up he climbed without a care. He didn't pay attention to clothes one would wear. Jutting out of the mountain he saw a hut. Surely, he thought, they won't keep their doors shut. Only now did he reflect on why he was here. And why he'd ventured in conditions so austere. Was he afraid of dying? Or had he grown soft? Had his inner pain and screams grown too oft? The door creaked open and a face appeared. Gil just stood there staring at his beard. The man said, without a call, you dropped by. You, sir, are kind of a bad guy. Gil really did ask this man if he'd heard of coffee beans. The man told him he hoped he didn't pass on his jeans. Gil wanted to know this man's name. The man sighed and remained at the door frame. I guess you could really say I'm the best. But in all honesty, you should call me Rest. May I come inside, said the poor cold man. But Rest said he should hit him with a pan. I'm trying to be secretive, and here you are. In a future time, you'll call yourself Czar. Gil wondered how now he could take this title. But Rest interrupted by asking if this is vital. Gil told him he'd once heard a crazy story, but that he wasn't sure if he'd take it as allegory. Rest said he'd explain everything soon, but right now his actions were controlled by the moon. I don't believe in the directions of the satellites, deciding who exactly will become knights, but I'm willing to listen to some exaggeration, if it'll give me a good sensation. Well, that's good, because I've got something for you, if you're willing to be born completely anew. I'll do anything, said Gil, just convert me. After all, he said, I'm nearly thirty. Oh, the gods, said Rest, you're dying already. If you'll be careful, I'll try to keep you steady. Enough Stalin, what can you possibly demonstrate? Oh, I've dealt enough with your hate. And the bottom of this lake is a perfect plant. If you think you can still it, you can't. It is a path you must take and earn. It is a lesson after all you must learn. But if I do it, Gil said, I'll be forever? Oh yes, you'll die absolutely never. You can't die, you're completely immortal. I have found humanity's secret portal. However, there is more to this narrative. To start from the beginning, it is imperative. Oh my gods, Gil sighed. Nothing is short today. Everything must turn into a very long essay. Once there was a lot of unclaimed valueless dirt, and one drunk god tried to assert there was worth if you turned it to people, and they would gladly build you a steeple if you invent a crazy thing called religion, in which into every person you could pigeon. The rest of the gods couldn't help but agree, and one of them people even cultivated tea, which the gods greedily boiled and drank, and the different humans started pulling rank. Unfortunately for them, humans didn't come without a cost. The hungover parties tossed and tossed, all the while from below came screaming, so the lazy ones started scheming, and they brought to the queen a perfect plan. They devised in their eyes the fall of man. Have you, queen, ever heard of the idea of a flood? We'll cover the entire earth with their blood. Before you know it, the sleeping in will return. And with a nod, the queen let him adjourn. They killed almost everyone with this thought. And for all the terror that they wrought, there was crying and teeth chattering on the hill. Even though it's bloodthirsty, could not chill. So one came to me and said, hey, here's a boat. It is the best way to get around our moat. I took it with a bit of humility, because I always doubted my ability. How did I know I was to possibly survive? The god knew what would keep me alive. It is a secret plant under the lake. Come on, grab it. Your life's at stake. 
Wait, Gil said. My life is too good to die. Rest said, Gil, you're kind of a bad guy. Gil got from Rest some decent directions. He got to where he wouldn't need corrections. He descended and found his own path, avoiding all the gods and their wrath. For the most part, he continued uninterrupted, his whole way of being not yet corrupted. The cold and the wind wouldn't stop him. To him, strength was a synonym. When he found the lake, he dove deep, ready for the awards he was to reap. Here comes the depth and water in the lungs, but he could taste it all on his tongue. When he found it, he plucked it and found how easy it was to permit. When he placed it on the edge of the shore, the immortality had not been much of a chore. He started washing his hair that was all over. When something arrived to see if he was a pushover, a snake, a lizard, crawled along in the grass. I'd love to talk to you, snake, but I've got to get out of here by daybreak. Oh, but the world enjoys sleep. To keep on your journey would make you very cheap. Gil nodded his head and started to nap. To see a talking snake must make me madcap. The snake started to mystify and said, Gil, you're kind of a bad guy. While Gil's head was underwater, the snake committed a version of manslaughter. It took the plant and the queen chuckled. And when Gil realized it, his knees buckled. Because everything he'd worked for was gone. The limits of his life had been drawn. At this moment he realized that he'd die. And he'd lost his chance to deify. So what could he do but go back home? Surely there was nowhere else to roam. The kingdom needs him to direct the world. As around the solar system it whirled. His inhabitants again felt terrorized. But the one who returned was who they despised. I'd like to tell you had been reformed, and all this had made him informed, but for the most part he was the same. He was still trying to fight for a claim. His city was in ruins and despair. Gil wouldn't give up his share. He built a building to the sky, even though his enemies were all nearby. The casino priest started to make a shrine, while all the citizens got in the bread line. As he got older, Gil's body started to betray, and he had gotten more frightened every birthday. Life from him began to escape. His body was only held up by tape, and when the end was nigh, his grave would say, he was kind of a bad guy.